All right, Madam Chair, you may begin. Thank you. Good evening and welcome to the October 20th, 2022 Boundary Public Hearing. Before we begin, I would like to ask everyone to turn off any wireless communication devices to avoid technical interference with our meeting. Also, we will have Spanish interpretation services available for this evening. Mrs. Benvenides, would you please make an announcement that Spanish interpretation is available by clicking on the globe icon at the bottom of the screen. Muy buenas tardes a todos y muchas gracias por asistir a la reunión del día de hoy, 20 de octubre. Le vamos a pedir que por favor apaguen toda la comunicación técnica que puede interferir con la reunión del día de hoy. Le queríamos avisar que el día de hoy tenemos interpretación en español disponible. Usted puede seleccionar el globo en la parte de abajo de su pantalla para adquirir interpretación en español. For those who are not, thank, gracias, and thank you. For those who are not able to observe now, this meeting is being recorded and will be available for later viewing on the Prince George's County Public Schools YouTube channel. Tonight's public hearing is being held for the sole purpose of receiving public comment on the boundary proposal presented by the CEO. The Board of Education appreciates your participation in this public hearing to voice your opinions on the boundary proposal. With the public's involvement, we aim to meet the needs of our students and staff in Prince George's County Public Schools in a collaborative manner. Ms. Guerrero, would you please call the roll? Yes, Madam Chair. Mrs. Adam Stafford. Ms. Boozer Strother. Here. Mr. Saron Ruiz. Dr. Harris. Mrs. Lasaya Frazier. Present. Mrs. Makins Murray. Here. Dr. Z Miller. Present. Mr. Murray. Here. Mr. Thomas. Mr. Valentine. Mrs. Williams. And Dr. Miller. Present. Do we have a quorum? Yes, Madam Chair. Thank you. We will now yield the floor to Dr. Monica Golson, our Chief Executive Officer, to provide brief remarks outlining the boundary proposal. Good evening. Dr. Golson. Good evening. Thank you for this opportunity. Today is one of two public boundary <laughs> hearings to hear from our community. Um, and then to make final recommendations that'll be before the board October 27th and November 10th. I look forward to hearing from our community. Thank you. You're muted, Dr. Miller. Thank you. We will now hear from our registered speakers for public comment. comment. There are 46 registered live public hearing speakers for tonight's public hearing. I'd like to note to the public speakers, this is an opportunity to hear from the community. Therefore, comments and questions presented tonight will not be addressed at this time. You will have three minutes to share your public comments. At the sound of the buzzer, you may complete that sentence only. You may not relinquish any part of your speaking time to another registered or unregistered individual. You are encouraged to use titles rather than names. For example, board member, CEO, executive director, et cetera. Your adherence to these guidelines will enable the public comment process to move smoothly. Our first registered speaker for this evening is Zandra Brown. Good evening. My name is Zandra Brown. I am a teacher within the county and also a resident of Prince George's. I'm here to speak on behalf of Pointer Ridge Elementary School, which is recommended to be consolidated in this proposal. 
Um, but there is an issue that has been overlooked within the proposal and that had been brought to the attention of the school boundaries office during the community input sessions. And that is that um, there are two large developments that are along 301 close to Pointer Ridge. One is called Amber Ridge and the other is called South Lake. Amber Ridge is advertised to have a complete build out of 187 residential units. It currently has 63 units available. South Lake is advertised as having 1,360 dwelling units, which will be comprised of multifamily apartments, condominiums, townhouses, and single family. Between these two developments, there will be a, a possible total of 1,547 residential units. Most developers say that an average community will have 2.1 children average per dwelling, which means that you are looking at a potential influx of 3,249 students to the nearby schools. While not all of these students will attend our public schools, the vast majority will, at a conservative estimate of 75% of these students attending, that would mean 2,437 additional students within that area of Bowie. When you consider that those students, about 60% of them will be elementary age, 1,460 potential students will need to have seats available. If you close Pointer Ridge, you will have a loss of 596 seats during a time when within a matter of two years, when build outs are complete, you will need those seats. The pu um, published schools that they are to go to right now are Northview Elementary, Woodmore Elementary and Perrywood Elementary. With Pointer Ridge combined, the available seats would be 2,763. They currently have enrolled amongst all four 1,925 students, and that's without the addition of these additional communities. These additional communities will require another 1,462 seats. If you leave Pointer Ridge open, you will be still looking for 625 seats. If you close Pointer Ridge, you will be looking for 1,221 additional seats in this area of Bowie for elementary school students. So please reconsider closing Pointer Ridge, considering that these two communities are actively building out and one has already gotten um, residences occupying the homes. Thank you very much for your consideration to this. Thank you, Ms. Brown. Our next speaker, Kendra Gatto, Individual Concerns for the Plans to Close Pointer Ridge Elementary School. Good evening. My name is Kendra Gatto. I'm a National Board Certified Teacher. I am currently the Reading Specialist and School Test Coordinator for Pointer Ridge Elementary. I've been a Pointer Ridge Panther for 19 years. I'm speaking tonight in hopes of saving Pointer Ridge from closing. Pointer Ridge is a four-star performing school and has earned an E-Gate recognition from the state. We are recognized as a green school for our recycling program, and we have an outdoor environmental classroom. All classroom teaching positions are currently filled with teachers who all hold advanced degrees. Two of our teachers are national board certified, and four teachers are in the process of becoming certified. We take our profession very seriously and work very hard to help our students achieve success. Every person employed at Pointer Ridge goes above and beyond to help our students succeed. I attended the boundary meetings that were held in phase one of this process. During this meeting, during a meeting in the breakout room, I asked the following questions. Why close a neighborhood school when two new developments were being built? Were these neighborhoods considered when creating the plan? I was told no. The planning team used the information from 2019 to make their recommendations. The three schools to receive our students are five to seven miles away. We are having a bus driver shortage at this time. Why create more transportation needs? All of the current walking students would now need transportation. Was this considered? The response I received was, I don't think so. All three of these schools would suffer an increase in their enrollment, putting them over or near capacity. In this time of social distancing, why consider making class sizes larger for them? Our students are already suffering a, a learning loss. Why create another social emotional issue? 
Were these points considered by the team? The moderator could not answer these questions either. These questions now need to be answered and considered by the Board of Education before making your final decision. Why close a neighborhood school when two new developments are being built? Our county executive has repeatedly encouraged walkable communities. Pointer Ridge is a walkable community. This proposal contradicts the county growth goals. I predict the new homeowners are not aware of this boundary change either. Our enrollment is increasing every day as the new townhomes and um, families move into the new developments. Our kindergarten classes are currently over capacity at 30 students each. The ratio is supposed to be one to 22 according to AP 7100. For grades one to five, the ratio is supposed to be one to 25. We've exceeded those limits at each grade level with our current enrollment. Why create more transportation needs when there are not enough bus drivers? Why send our students five to seven miles away from their neighborhood? Our, why overcrowd the other schools? Our goal should be to reduce class sizes, not increase it. Having overcrowded classrooms and schools will not help us meet the social emotional needs of our students or close the learning gap created by the pandemic. Why close a high performing E-Gate school? And why create more social emotional issues for our students by closing their school that they have come to know and love? In closing, please remember that students are more than numbers. National Board core proposition number one is knowing your students, families, and communities. Pointer Ridge Elementary School works more like a family than a business. We all have the best interest of our students in mind when making decisions. We hope you do too. Please delay and reconsider your decision to close Pointer Ridge until you have had an opportunity to revisit the impact of these communities. Thank this you. Is your, thank you. Your time is up. And thank you, uh, Ms. Gatto. Next, we will have Courtney Talmud, uh, Concerns for the Plans of uh, the Close of Pointer Ridge. Is Ms. Talmud on? I'm here, but it's the close of Adelphi, not Pointer Ridge. Thank you. Well, I, okay. Well, my apologies. That's okay. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Courtney Talmud, and I am the reading specialist at Adelphi Elementary. Adelphi Elementary is my home. I have been at Adelphi for 28 years. <clears throat> 25 years ago, before Mary Harris Mother Jones was built, the faculty and families were told that that would be our new school. Fast forward, that didn't happen. We still don't have a new building and according to the new boundary changes, it appears that Adelphi Elementary will no longer exist. For over 60 years, Adelphi Elementary has educated students and helped families in our community. Now, Ella, Adelphi Elementary could be a thing of the past. I'm wondering what was, who was thinking or what they were thinking when they came up with a plan to build a new Adelphi Middle School. What were they thinking would happen to the elementary school that housed pre-K to sixth grade students. Where will our pre-K to sixth grade students or even fifth grade students go at this time? What will happen to those 600 extra students? Just before the construction of the Adelphi Middle School began, we moved out of our old building into Cherokee Lane. That building wasn't big enough to hold all of us. So 10 classes pre-K to first grade were housed in the Judy Hoyer Center of Cool Spring. This academic year, the modular of Cherokee Lane was finally finished and the 10 classes moved back home to be a family. Now we're learning once again that we will be split or dissolved. On September 30th, just last month, the entire county of educators and support employees watched the film Paper Children. That film was about Hispanic immigrants and the difficulties they face here in America. That movie is about our students, the students that I serve every day. Our students and their families will not speak up for themselves for a variety of reasons. Why is our county marginalizing them? These students and their families rely on us, the educators, 
They have come to know us for many years and ask us to help them. We have written letters to support their documentation, help them fill out job applications, help them connect with doctor's appointments and have even taught parents how to read and write. How can you split up our family? How can you continue to marginalize our families and brush them off? They're entitled to their neighborhood school, their walking school, one that they have learned to grow, to trust and rely on. Please tell me when also someone from the county will inform our parents. Our parents are receiving letters and they are in English. They do not understand. We need someone to come out and speak to them in their language. Thank you, your time is up. And I've made the correction and staff, please make the correction uh, in our notes or and on board docs. It's Courtney Talmud for Adelphi. Thank you. Thank Next you. will be, be Stephanie Jones, uh, opposed to the closure of Pointer Ridge Elementary. Yes, ma'am, thank you and good evening. Um, I am Stephanie Jones. I am a parent of a th current third grade student at Pointer Ridge Elementary School. And um, I wanna share a little bit about his, my son's academics. When he was in kindergarten, of course it was no one's fault. The school year was um, completely disrupted and everyone was shifted to virtual. For their all of the third current third grade, their first grade year, they were virtual the entire year. Half of them were virtual the um, first semester of second grade year. So during their third grade year, it's um, very upsetting and disappointing that Prince George's County Schools is saying, thank you for trusting us with your children. Now trust us again as we send them to yet another school. I feel that this is not taking into account their mental health. I feel it's not taking into account the need for consistency and stability in their environment. Um, being a homeowner in District 4, having lived in this home since 2010, I chose this neighborhood for Pointer Ridge Elementary School. I hope and pray that it will continue to be a staple in our community, but to know that only one school exists in District 4 and one school exists in District 3, it is sending a clear message to us South Bowie residents that the county, if you are to close Point of Ridge Elementary School, is not concerned with our children's education. You would, in essence, be creating an educational desert for our students. Why remove a school that's highly performing that received an EGATE certificate from MSCE in 2019, who has been successful in less than two weeks at raising well over $17,000 in a two week fundraiser. That shows that the community is behind this school and this entire um, initiative that we're embarking on to tell students that, okay, now we wanna disrupt your learning and your education again even further when they have had so much trauma that adds to their ACEs. And I'm sure you all as educators are very well aware of the adverse childhood experiences. This would further traumatize students. There's been reports from the um, US Department of Education the Office of Civil Rights specifically to President Biden explaining why there's a need for smaller class sizes and for children to remain in their same schools. So Prince George's County, if they close Point of Ridge Elementary is saying, we wanna disregard and negate the studies and everything that we've learned post pandemic and still just dishevel and shift around our children. That is not in the best interest of Point of Ridge. That is not in the best interest of our children, namely my son. Um, I actually pulled him from private school when he was in um, pre-kindergarten so that he could attend Point of Ridge Elementary School. So my decision would be that he will not transfer to Perry Wood Elementary or any other elementary school should you decide to close this school. He will transfer to a private school. So I'm praying that you all decide to keep Point of Ridge Elementary School open. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Ms. Jones. Next will be Kristen Harmon. Concerns for the plans to close Point of Ridge Elementary School. Ms. Harmon. Good evening, everyone. Um, again, my name is Kristen Harmon, and I am a 
proud Point of Ridge parents. Um, I've had the honor to see five of my children come through Point of Ridge. Two of my children are currently in the third grade. Um, and again, I totally understand and relate to the learning loss and everything that occurred um, from the pandemic. And again, this is my kid's first full year. Um, but besides that, let me give you some facts. So again, enrollment has increased since um, last year, over 5%. We have these new communities coming in. Amber Ridge has 200 units. Um, South Lake has 1360 um, units. Um, from what we're being told by the county is that these developments are coming in phases, but what people are not saying is that the first and major part of these developments are the residential phases. The commercial phases are the ones that aren't coming for the next couple of years because it's um, contingent upon how many residential families are able to get in and what time frame. Um, Porter Ridge, we've actually had recent improvements to the fire life safety systems. We have smart boards in all the classrooms. And yes, we raised over $17,000 in a <coughs> fundraiser over the last two weeks for recreation at our school. Um, Porter Ridge Elementary is, again, the only elementary school in District 4. Um, and as you know, the city of Bowie also has an education budget that helps students within the city. If our kids are shipped over to Port to Perrywood, we're not going to have access to those funds and that assistance. Um, and again, it we're we're just trying to figure out why is this a, being a decision now when you have other priorities in the county, specifically at Bowie High School. No one is addressing the fact that Bowie High School still has to have two different buildings as well as temporaries to um, have their students there. But yet you guys are taking this opportunity to focus on our babies. I'm very concerned about the closing of the school. My children are only 184 steps. Literally, that's the distance that it takes for them to go from my home to the school and for them to go over to Perrywood. That's just, just unreasonable and unacceptable. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Harmon. Dia Maxinu, individual questions if these changes are mandatory. Um, it's mandatory. Yes. Mandatory. Hello. Mandatory. Yes. Hi, my daughter London Maxino is currently in the second grade at Hyattsville Elementary School. Has been enrolled there since kindergarten. Uh, she's done very well there. We love the community there. It's a short distance from our home, so I do not understand the need to have her transfer to Riverdale Elementary School. And there will only be four of us affected in our neighborhood. So why just send? Why not keep the four students at Hyattsville Elementary School? Is that it? Is that it? Yes, that is it. Thank you, Ms. Max. Thank you, Ms. Max. Next is Courtney Legrand, individual clarity on the school zone changes. Hi, good evening, everyone. Um, <clears throat> Uh, hello, I'm a mother whose daughter is a first grader at Perrywood Elementary. My daughter fell in love with Perrywood as soon as she went to kindergarten orientation in the summer of 2021. With this being my first child entering school, it was such a warm welcome that I received upon my initial orientation from not only her assigned teacher, but the overall staff as a whole. I myself grew up in the PG County school system, so it's been such a pleasure to watch my daughter blossom during her time at Perrywood. One of the most amazing things about this journey is that the neighborhood that we live in is literally three minutes around the corner from Perrywood. This makes day-to-day -day life so easy for daily drop-offs, as well as my mother, who we live with and who is elderly, to be able to get my daughter quickly from school and or the bus stop and get quickly back home. With the children rebounding back to normal socialization life in 2021 after the strains of quarantining and virtual learning during the pandemic, I think it would be very detrimental to have to move children who have grown to love their school to another school that logistically is farther away from their home. While I understand the county is designed with certain zone lines, I personally feel that a school that is literally three minutes driving from a neighborhood should be the automatic school for those children to attend. My daughter and I would be utterly heartbroken if she has to move to another school and lose all the amazing connections she's built with both her friends, teachers, and the administrative staff. The timing of this switch directly after the children haven't gotten socially and excuse me, educationally comfortable post-isolation from one another from the pandemic would be such an emotional disruption to the day-to-day -day structure and social well-being of a lot of students potentially affected by this decision to switch them, especially for the younger children such as my daughter. 
It is truly my hope that my daughter, as well as the other children that reside in this neighborhood um, that attend Perrywood can continue their amazing education at the school they call home that is closest to their actual home. It is my hope to keep the school zoning, the school boundary zones left as is. Thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you, <clears throat> Ms. Legrand. Next is Dwight Drawn. Individual concerns of the impact to the tag designated schools. Is Mr. Drawn in queue? I see yes, him. Yes, Madam Chair. Is he on mute? He's on mute. Mr. Drawn, you're on mute. Can you unmute him? I'm asking to unmute. We also have good Alex evening. This is Sorry, good evening. This is his wife, Alima Drawhorn. So he wasn't able to actually um, join. So we we're like, I'm listening in, but I can always check in with what his question was. So right now I'm just listening. Okay, thank you. No problem, thank you. We'll, we'll move to the next uh, person. Um, Alex Martin, opposed to the closure of Corner Ridge. Good evening, everyone. Um, I would just like to speak on the, it was really the question uh, about mental health of these students. Um, you know, as you know, we all are all coming from COVID and shutdowns and no school and then virtual learning. Now it's like their full first year in school. Um, my daughter, who's first year at Pointer Ridge um, in second grade, is coming from a school that really wasn't the best school. You know, coming home saying that she doesn't like school, she doesn't like what's going on, she's not being taught the correct way. But to now see her growth and her joy every day, I pick her up from Pointer Ridge, saying how she loves her teacher, she loves her principal, she loves going to school. You don't hear too many kids say they love going to school. Now, two weeks in the school year, we get a letter saying that she will be switching. So I just ask you guys, please, please consider these kids' mental health, what they've been through in the past four years, what, they, what they're about to go through in the next coming years. Just keep their environment the same, keep their learning the same so they can grow and expand and, and be anything they would like to be. I think this move will is another detriment to their learning curve. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, uh, Mr. Martin. Lynette Gilliam. Is Lynette Gilliam opposed to the proposed changes? Ms. Gilliam? Hi. Hi, yes. So I'm opposed because I, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, <laughs> I'm opposed because I've been a resident of Bowie since 1999, and we pay a lot of taxes. We pay some of the highest taxes in Bowie, Maryland than any other Maryland um, counties. So I would like for my child to be able to stay in a Bowie, Maryland school, to have him transferred out to another school like Catterin or Prairiewood or some of the other schools, that's not even in the county where I reside. I'm in the city I mean, where I reside, where I pay taxes. So I would just, you know, was wondering why they would choose to move my kid from a buoy elementary school to an area that I, that's not a, no, a not so desirable area that I'm not interested in my child going to that school. Is that Next it, Ms. Gilliam? Thank, yes, thank you. Bye. Bye. Next, we will need a Spanish interpretation for Ladis Cruz, individual opposed to changes of boundary from Langley Park, McCormick to Cherokee Lane. Okay, ahora le vamos a dar la oportunidad. I'm sorry, could you please repeat the name of the mother? Leticia? Letiz Cruz. Leti, la señora Leti Cruz. Uh, vamos a hablar acerca del cambio de Langley Park McCormick a la Cherokee Lane. 
yo seré su intérprete y le voy a pedir que por favor hable en cifras pequeñas para yo poder interpretarlas en inglés. Muchas gracias, señora. Hola, buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Ledis Cruz. Y pues a mí no me gustaría que me cambiaran la niña hasta allá. Pues porque acá yo la tengo cerca por cualquier emergencia. Yo tengo cerca la, la niña. Y pues... Oh. Okay, we're going to see this apart then. Hello, good evening, everyone. My name is Ledis Cruz, and I would like to say that I am against this change. I do not want there to be a change because here at the current school where my daughter is enrolled, I have her nearby, and I am close in case I'm in an emergency. I can walk. Siga, señora, por favor. Sí, pues cualquier emergencia, pues tengo la niña aquí cerca, y pues no... No me sentaría cómoda que la niña fuera a otra escuela, ya que en esta escuela ya tiene ella dos años, ya tres años con este. Y pues me gustaría que siguiera yendo hasta esta escuela hasta que tuviera un poquito más de edad. I would I feel uh, comfortable with my daughter leaving the school. She's been in the school for three years and I would like for her to continue to be here until she is a bit older. ¿Algo más, señora? No, solamente. Uh, that is all. Thank you. Thank you, gracias. <clears throat> Next, Mr. Mike Thomas, individual opposed to boundary changes that affect Whitehall Elementary School. Mr. Thomas. Thank you, Chair. I am speaking on behalf of Whitehall Elementary parents. Prior to the pandemic, we were told that our school was overcrowded. We as parents decided to form a residency verification process to verify that the people who actually reside in this area actually go to Whitehall. We have gathered over 150 signatures explaining the fact that yes, we are opposed to this decision to move our students out of Whitehall to other neighboring schools. As a father of two, soon to be three students who are going to Whitehall, I am strictly opposed to it. I am wondering, has the Board of Education actually considered what the ramifications could be. You are moving students from a learning environment, not so much like a community, but yet a family that they've developed over these past five, six years. What we are trying to do is saying, hey, we need you to take a look and say, hey, do you actually have the actual numbers to support your decision? Because if so, then we need to actually see them. Also, we are wondering if, because my children will be zoned for Tulip Grove now, if Tulip Grove was actually have the numbers to support the students who are coming to this area, to, who are coming from Whitehall to the school. We are also wondering if they are prepared for them as well and how that is going to affect students who go from one school to another school and possibly to another school. Um, I know that some of the speakers have even said, yes, you know, students are not numbers. My children are not numbers. My children have made friends that have, you know, that they've been with for as long as they've lived. They have the joy that they love learning at Whitehall. And I'm just saying that this should really be seriously considered at this time. I thank you for my time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Thomas. Next, we will have Christy Tall opposed to the closure of Pointer Ridge Elementary. Ms. Toll. Good evening. My name is Christy Toll. I'm a National Board Certified Teacher. I am also the math ILT at Pointer Ridge and have worked here for eight years. Pointer Ridge is a four-star school, green school, and is E-Gate certified. Why consolidate a neighborhood school when two new communities are being built? The new communities were not considered when developing the three scenarios. Our utilization rate has increased from 48% to 53%. Our enrollment is growing. Our current enrollment data is 319 students. Amber Ridge has 150 to 200 townhome units. South Lake has 1,360 units. This totals 1,510 to 1,560 units. South Bowie is rapidly expanding. How will large class sizes be addressed after consolidation? AP 7100 states recommended class ratios of one to 22 for kindergarten and one to 25 for grades one through five. We have two kindergarten classes with ratios of one to 29 and one to 30 and are already in need of another kindergarten teacher. 
We have met or exceeded the ratios across all grade levels with class sizes ranging from 25 to 30. The following is a sample of current school year 23 data from the school from the three schools. Northview's third grade classes, three classrooms of 28. Fifth grade classrooms, three classrooms of 29. Their third and fifth grades have already exceeded the class size ratios before consolidation and before the new developments. Perrywood, the average class sizes for all of their grade levels is 25 to 30, which means all grade levels have already met or exceeded the class ratios before consolidation and before considering the new developments. They are also a uniform school. Was that taken into consideration? Because that presents a financial hardship for some of our families. Woodmore, their kindergarten class is, is size 21 to 22, and grade four classes are about 24. Woodmore has school hours that are much later from 915 to 325, and they're also a Woodmore, uh, uniform school. So between the uniform school, the later school times, and it's an older building than Pointer Ridge. Later school times and school <clears throat> uniforms present financial and job related hardships and stressors for our families. Aging and substandard school buildings are a concern for parents. Pointer Ridge is 51 years old. However, several improvements have been made to our school. A new parking lot, replacement lighting in the parking lot, a new fire alarm system, removal of asbestos, smart boards in all of our classrooms, a state-of-the-art sound system, upgrades to the playground, and we just received a new shed. The first priority for PGCPS should be the students. What is the plan for Pointer Ridge if it is consolidated? The community deserves to know how the building will be used if it is not for their children. Is it going to be an empty building in their community which will become unsightly and attract vandalism, which will most definitely lower homeowner property values? The question that needs to be answered before making your decision is, why are we spending money on making improvements to Pointer Ridge if the students will not benefit from these improvements? Why are we prioritizing adults over the education of our students? I will Thank close you. Thank Your you. time is up. Thank you very much. Um, next will be um, Graciela Carranza, concerned that students have to change schools. And I was told that she's not here. I'm just going calling their names for the record. Alex Cepeda, uh, opposed to proposed boundary changes. And Floria, the Peralta, individual concerns about the proposed boundary changes. Now we'll move to Tosin King, Tosin King, concerned about Pointer Ridge Elementary closure. Is Tosin King in the? I'm here. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to speak at today's hearing on the consolidation of Pointer Ridge Elementary School. My oldest daughter is currently in the first grade there and our family had planned to send her younger sister. I was shocked to learn the rumors of our school closing was real. I was even more shocked to receive the CEO's letter stating my daughter is recommended to begin second grade at Northview Elementary School. Apparently, PGCPS reasons for targeting our school is due to our older building and under enrollment. What is most alarming about this decision is there seems to have been no consideration for performance and the impact on student achievement. Based on data from the Maryland Education Report Card, Pointer Ridge was performing better than 51% of all public elementary schools in the state, has a four out of five star rating. Pointer Ridge outperforms two of the three schools the CEO wants to send our children. My family has a relationship with Northview Elementary through my daughter's extracurricular activities. While the school has a modern design and the halls are shiny, the most recent data shows that 79% of public elementary schools in the state perform better than Northview that has a three out of five star rating. It's, it is true that among public elementary schools in the Bowie area, Pointer Ridge has the lowest enrollment. At present, a total of 319 students are enrolled there. Our school enrollment rate, however, is not significantly different than other schools in our area. Based on Maryland's report card, 2021 enrollment for three other um, Bowie-based public schools were in the low 300s. There is currently a 16 student difference between the second lowest enrolled school reported in 2021 to the Grove. Pointer Ridge has experienced increased enrollment over the past several years from 219 in 2020 to 305 in 2021 to currently 319. 
the upward trajectory will continue to climb with children from the new developments and younger fi families buying homes turning over in our neighborhoods. In the future, this plan will surely cause overcrowding and make PGCPS even less attractive to families. Rather than closing our schools, PGCPS should be working towards improving student achievement so our public elementary schools can achieve outcomes like Yorktown and Tulip Grove that perform above the 80th percentile in the state and has lower enrollment than what is being created by this consolidation plan. PGCPS should be working on making school achievement equitable and pulling our county out of the bottom of the barrel of public school performance. Shifting Pointer Ridge Elementary students to schools with enrollment numbers already close to 500 and 600 students will not help the county improve its standing. It, it, it will create stress and stretch resources to those, to those receiving schools and not properly prepare our children for the demands of post-primary learning. Thank you for your time. And thank you, <clears throat> Ms. King. I'm going to try this. Mbause Iwunoge in Wabinele. Concerns about the consolidation of Pointer Ridge Elementary School. I see they're in the queue, but Miss um, Iwunoge. Um, yes, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, good evening, everyone, and thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak today. My name is Ma Boese Iwanoge Mwabinale. I am a parent to um, one of the Pointer Point Ridge Elementary students, and I've lived in Bowie for over 13 years. My four kids actually went to Bowie, to Pointer Ridge Elementary, and my last child is actually in fourth grade in Pointer Ridge <coughs> Elementary. Last in 2020, my son actually got the opportunity to go to CMIT for the charter school, but due to the good performance of Pointer Ridge, I and his dad decided not to change him from Pointer Ridge. I've been with Pointer Ridge for over 10 years and they have the best teachers that we can think of. And the kids and the teachers and us became family working with Pointer Ridge. Last year, when they got the new principal that came to school after the pandemic and the kids went back to school, that was when we had the idea that Pointer Ridge was going to be shut down. And when I asked the question why, the two reasons that was given to me was that Pointer Ridge is an old building and also that we are short enrolled. And I'm wondering, my mortgage is 30 years mortgage. My house currently that I'm living in is 20 years old. That means, and I'm less than 45 years. If I'm going to age in my house, I'm going to live more than 10, 50 years in my life in my house. I've been to Pointer Ridge. It is one of the knitted school that I've walked into. I have a, two high schoolers and one middle schooler, and I've been in their school. When I went to Samuel Ogu, my son was in middle school. We find rats everywhere. But in Pointer Ridge, it is well kept. You won't even know it was 51 years old if I wasn't told it was 51 years old. So I don't think that was one of good reasons that would be given to us to use to displace our kids. Let us also have it in mind about their mental health. I work as a healthcare provider, and one of the reasons why teenagers actually think about suicidal committing it is because if they change the environment, these young kids need to be familiarized with their teachers that they already started off with because not even just in regular understanding of the mental health, the Bible also said it, train up a child in the way it should grow so that when they're older, they will not depart from it. The foundation that we give these young kids starts off now. If we put them in a school that is overcrowded, 40 kids, that will be minimal from Northview, Perry no. or whichever school that will be put in, that is overcrowding the school already. My child goes to Duval High School, that is 38 kids, and the teacher barely controls these kids. The kid comes out wild and actually acting out of control. When I asked the teacher one of the days that I went to observe, he said, I'm just one person. I can't control all. That's exactly what these kids will face if we consolidate Thank point you. to this, and put them on your the Your time is Thank up. You. Thank you. Uh, next is... Um, Marie Hines Camera, 
concerns of the adverse emotional <clears throat> turmoil in the children's lives caused by displacement and school change. Good evening, thank you so much. I'm Mrs. Heinz Kamara and former PG CPS teacher. Um, so I'm gonna share two sides wanting to keep Pointer Ridge Elementary open. Um, the personal side is I have four children. Um, and so if Pointer Ridge is closed, this will be a, like a fourth transitional process for my, my two children who attends Pointer Ridge to two younger children. My son who attended Woodmore Elementary just exited from an IEP program. Transitions are a trigger for him. I'm so excited about how he transitioned well into Pointer Ridge School. My daughter who just is in first grade at um, Pointer Ridge, she's a little bit um, getting used to the transition process. Even Woodmore, she's still scrolling through my phone just to look at all the pictures from Woodmore Elementary School. She's crying most of the time because, you know, it has been a transition for her. Um, we have been displaced in um, a traumatic event from a fire. Um, my kids are kind of traumatized from the fire. So we had to be displaced from our home, another part in Bowie. And now we, because we moved to Bowie earlier, now this to have them move again will be very, very tra traumatizing for them. On the community aspect of Pointer Ridge Elementary School, um, this school is data driven, just like Woodmore Elementary School. Leadership presence is awesome. Imagine I, I'm a new parent at Pointer Ridge. I, when I went to, to the school the first time, seeing the leadership, seeing the principal, I did not even know that that was the principal by name. Just her presence there let me know that my kids were in good hands. Um, the PTO presence at Pointer Ridge, strong, dynamic. Um, schools like this, you don't want to close. Um, PGCPS stands out because of schools like Woodmore and Pointer Ridge Elementary School. Um, with reference to the, test, um, the statistics that's happened with PG schools, not a lot of schools present quality grades like Pointer Ridge and, and um, Woodmore Elementary School. On their report cards, four stars. Why close schools like this? So one of the recommendations I came here to, to say is, Use Pointer Ridge Elementary School as an exemplar investment opportunity as a pilot program in schools to be examples for other um, new PGCPS schools. Use what is already um, maintained and all, all the things that have already been done. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you so much. Ms. Camera. Uh, next will be Michelle Tucker against proposed boundary changes. Ms. Tucker, is she in the queue? Oh, I see her, but she's muted. Michelle Tucker. Good evening, everyone. I'm a mom of two children who attend Whitehall and I'm against the boundary change. I feel like the school is a great school for the children. My children are really flourishing, especially my son. Every year he gets more and more confident. I feel like the teachers are very invested in their well-being um, and what's best for them. Um, this has caused my son a lot of anxiety. He's very much a warrior. Um, and I think these kids have been through a lot these last couple of years. And I feel like they need consistency to be able to grow socially. Um, and I really think this will affect, you know, the children's mental health tremendously. So I just hope that you guys take this into consideration and just keep the boundaries the way that it is. And thank you. Thank you, Ms. Tucker. Next, we will have Josephine Angmortic uh, opposed to proposed boundary changes. Good evening, everybody. My name is Josephine, and my son attends uh, Martin Luther King Jr. And um, 
before the beginning of the year, I have to prepare him mentally and physically because he was wondering whether he's going to be bullied, whether he will make new friends. And mentally, it, it was tough for me because I'm a single mom. I have to prepare him as a boy. It's not easy to bring him up. And then they have to change it again after one year, after a year in third grade, moving him to another school where I have to mentally, I have to ask, I have to talk to him and then I, he has to ask me, why is he being moved? This is really not good for the kid and not for the parents. Because the beginning of the year is not easy with the pandemic and everything we coming out of it, they were excited to go to school. And then all of a sudden he has to, I was wondering if any of the board members have kids who have to go through that. Then they will understand what parents have to go through. If any of the board members have to go through with their kids. Thank you and have a good evening. Thank, <clears throat> thank you very much, Ms. Engelberg and Tech. Uh, Darius Hyman, opposed to the change and its effects on families. Mr. Hyman. Madam Chair, he's not in queue. Okay. Next will be Elise Cannon Brown, opposed to proposed boundary changes. She's not in queue either. Ms. Paula is here. Ms. Who? Hola. Paula. Paula Rivas. Paula Rivas, opposed to removing sixth grade from elementary school and a Spanish interpretation is needed for her. Hola, señora Paula. Yo voy a hacer su intérprete para español. Por favor, pause después de cada oración y yo voy a traducirla al inglés. Muchas gracias. Puede comenzar. Hola, buenas tardes. ¿Me escucha? Sí, la escuchamos. Eh, buenas tardes a todos. Pues estoy un poco preocupada por el cambio que han decidido la junta directiva hacer acerca de la escuela donde mi niña va. Um, así como yo, hay muchos padres, pues mi niña comenzó ahí desde kinder. Ella se siente muy cómoda. Uh, los maestros son buenos enseñadores, la directora igual. No he tenido ningún tipo de problema y ahora estoy preocupada porque me la van a mandar a una escuela muy peligrosa. Ahí hay armas, ahí los niños se pelean, ahí no hay una seguridad. Entonces se supone que aquí en este país la seguridad más que todo es para los niños y creo que no están pensando en eso en este momento. Muchísimas eh, gracias. Un momentito, tengo que traducir, por favor. Hello, good afternoon. Um, I would like to let you know that I am very worried for the changes that the Board of Education uh, would like to move forward. My daughter has been at the school for since kindergarten. She feels very comfortable. The teachers are great and so is the administration. I'm very concerned because I feel that it is a safe school and I am worried that the school that she'll be transferring to, it's a more dangerous school. It is. Um, it has been known that there have been gun issues at the school. There's no security and it's not safe. I would like to think that in the United States, you know, um, where they pride themselves in education and a safety, they would have their children in mind. ¿Puede seguir, señora? Eh, entonces no entiendo por qué razón pues están decidiendo eso sin contar con todos los padres porque así como no como yo hay muchos que están preocupados ah, entonces quisiera saber la razón el motivo por qué ya no va a haber sexto grado en la escuela donde va mi hija eh, a mí me queda a ella le queda algo cerca ah, en cualquier emergencia yo puedo ir o mi mamá En cambio, la otra escuela donde la van a mandar está más retirado, como 15 minutos en carro. Entonces, este, pues, sé que otros niños también pueden ir a la misma escuela, niños especiales. Pero, ¿por qué no hacen más aulas para poderlos tener sin tener que cerrar el sexto grado? I don't understand why uh, they would do this without asking parents like myself there are other parents that are concerned uh you know there are many uh, sixth graders as well uh like my daughter and one of the things about the school too is it is within close proximity to my house to my neighborhood the other school would be further away 15 minutes by car and like um me, you know, there are other children and they're also special education children. So instead of closing down the school and sending them to a different school, why don't they just invest and make more classrooms to house these students there? 
¿Puedo continuar? Continúe. Eh, es otro problema, los autobuses. Eh, cuando a mi niña le tocaría agarrar un autobús para allá, un bus escolar, eh, los autobuses no son seguros porque días pasan, días pasan. Entonces nosotros trabajamos. En cambio acá yo, yo pago a alguien que me lleve y me traiga a mi niña. Hasta allá no puedo hacer porque me queda muy retirado. Entonces deberían de, de ser conscientes y pensar en todo eso, lo que le va a afectar a mi hija, tanto emocional como en el aprendizaje, porque ella está acostumbrada acá con sus compañeritos desde kinder, ya ir a otra escuela hasta no rinden el aprendizaje. Y así como ella van a ver muchos niños que van a bajar su nivel de educación. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and interpret that. Okay. So another thing that I would like it to free to take into consideration is the buses and the transportation. Uh, the buses are not reliable. There are days where they come, there are days where they do not come. I work and I am not able to take her to school if the buses do not come. I currently have someone that pay that I pay that takes her to the school. If she were to move to the other school, that would not be feasible and I would not be able to pay someone to take her to that school. Please take into consideration the emotional damage that you would be doing to these students that will also impact their education. These students are used to the school, have been in the school since kindergarten, have a routine, have their friends, have their classmates. And I feel that this this change will not only affect their, them emotionally, but would also uh, deteriorate their academic success. Thank you. <clears throat> Do, Dr. Just, Dr. Miller, Dr. Miller, sorry, this is board member Murray. I was just checking, did we stop the time to, during translation? Like, did they get their full I gave time? for her three, I gave Ms. Uh, Ms. Rivas her three minutes, and then I've given time for the trans uh, translator. Okay, that's what I want to say, thank you. You can put your hand down now. Um, let's see. Uh, Michelle Hudson, individual opposed to Porter Ridge consolidation. Yes. Hello. Thank you. Um, I am a mother, a resident of Bowie and Porter Ridge proper. Um, community is the first thing that comes to me when 2020, I looked to buy a larger home for my family. Porter Ridge and Whitehall area was where I looked to. Um, so I walk my child past Corner Ridge when we do our office to say, this is going to be your school one day. So as a civil servant myself, we take an oath to serve the public. Your job is to serve our children, the teachers, and the community. So there was a Maryland education bill that addressed the overwhelming concerns of our teachers feeling like babysitters versus doing their passion of teaching classes. Our children, they are our future. So putting them first and receiving a quality education, that is what each one of you promise when filling these roles to serve as the Prince George's County and Bowie um, School Board. The future of Porner Ridge, I look at her to being a future Porner Ridge Elementary School Panther. The community, what happens when you leave a vacant building in our community? We're already plagued with cars being robbed, people loitering, you're just giving them another area that's not going to be manned by anybody of uh, letting it fester into um, situations and issues. We are a strong community. We work as a neighborhood. And I just want to understand, I keep hearing underutilization. What does underutilization mean? Is that really being interpreted as financial? Are you as a board trying to make a financial pool of we say dollars here? versus putting our children first. When I was purchasing and moving to Maryland, the first thing all my friends in DC and Virginia said, move there. Why are you moving to Prince George's County? So when I hear Angela Allsbrook always say, Prince George is proud, this doesn't make me Prince George proud to know that my child will be sitting on a bus two hours to get to school. My child will be in a classroom of 30 kids where she can't really get the needs that she needs to do my child can potentially be bullied because she's not in a community of where she knows the people that she's going to school with. My child being a ping pong ball of being moved and displaced every other year because the board can't figure out what to do with our school and rezoning. Thank you. And I hope you take your job seriously because election years are coming and we will be watching each one of you. Thank you, Ms. Hudson. <clears throat> the next is, um... Uh, Karina Barrera, and uh, she will need Spanish interpretation. And for the for clarification, 
the when there's interpretation, the um, the Spanish speaking uh, individual will get three minutes and the interpreter will get three minutes. So six minutes will be allotted for uh, translation. And after Miss um, being uh, Miss Flores, who's next, uh, who's opposed to boundary changes, the vice chair will pick up at number 36, I mean, number 30, Rhonda Billingsley. Thank you. Thank you. You said Ms. Barrera and you also said Ms. Flores. So I just want to clarify. Oh, Ms. Flores is next. Okay, uh, señora Flores, así que usted, um, por favor, uh, puede comenzar. Recuerde hablar en cifras pequeñas para poder traducírselas. Muchas gracias. Puede comenzar. Has Ms. Flores spoken? Ms. Flores? Sí, buenas, buenas tardes. Buenas tardes, mi, mi nombre es Carla Flores, eh, soy una madre preocupada por el cambio que quieren hacer con, con la escuela donde va mi hijo. Eh, mi hijo estudia en la escuela Langley Park McCormick School, una escuela excelente, y yo no estoy de acuerdo que a mi hijo me lo quieran trasladar para la escuela Cherokee. Mi hijo está estudiando ahí desde pre -K. Eh, mi hijo está adaptado a sus maestros y todo, la escuela me queda cinco minutos eh, en una emergencia yo me voy rápido a pie, cuando yo no lo puedo ir a traer, mi mamá lo puede ir a traer a pie a cinco minutos y en la escuela Cherokee este, me queda 15 minutos en carro así como yo estoy preocupada por el cambio, así hay muchos vecinos míos alrededor que están preocupados por el cambio entonces nosotros estamos eh, opuestos al cambio deberían de pensar en los niños en realidad que les va a afectar un cambio de escuela donde ellos están adaptados ya a sus maestros, a sus compañeros entonces no sé en realidad quiero que, que ustedes como directiva eh, deberían de concientizar pues, en ver eh, en qué les va a afectar y en qué no les va a afectar el cambio de escuela a los niños porque para mí la escuela Langley Parma Corn School es una excelente escuela, le digo. Y si quieren hacer el cambio, háganlo, pero con gente que se va a inscribir el otro año, porque ya los niños ya están adaptados a esa escuela. Leo. Ustedes van a dar bus, es cierto, van a dar bus, pero hay niños como el mío que están pequeños, no andan en bus. Entonces, sinceramente, yo estoy preocupada porque me le puede afectar en los aspectos de, de estudio a mi niño, así como los otros niños que también están, van a salir afectados. Gracias y feliz noche. Okay, my name is Clara Flores and I am, I am a mom and I am worried and against the change of the school that my child is attending. He is attending Langley Park McCormick and that is a very good school. I am not in agreement of him being transferred into Cherokee Lane. He has been at Langley Park McCormick since the pre-K. It is a five minute uh, walk away from my home. I can walk there in case of there, uh, if there is an emergency. And in the event that I cannot walk, my mother can walk to get him. If he were to transfer to uh, Cherokee Lane, that's 15 minutes by car, and it would be inaccessible to me. I am worried like many others on my in my neighborhood are worried as well. We are all opposed. We want you to think about the children and how this change will affect them, how it will affect their relationships with their classmates, with their uh, with the administration, with their teachers, and with their schoolwork. Please be conscientious as a board and look at all the effects this will have on our children. Uh, if you want to make a change, you should also maybe consider the timing of the change in the transportation. You will give a bus, but what about the smaller children? How will we navigate that system? It will affect our schooling, and I just really ask that you take the children into consideration when thinking about these changes. Thank you. Gracias. Uh, you have two more. Does she you have two more minutes? Tiene dos minutos más, señora. No le gustaría añadir algo más? Okay. Ok, tengo dos minutos más. Sí, este, deberían de ver, porque incluso aquí gente de, de, de alrededor donde yo vivo, hay un complejo de apartamentos que están preocupados por el cambio, porque como le, vuelvo a repetir, la escuela Langley para nosotros nos queda cinco minutos. Una emergencia que pase con nuestros hijos, nosotros vamos rápido ahí. La gente está dispuesta hasta firmar una carta y ver dónde se lleva para oponerse pues, al cambio que en realidad nos quieren hacer. Repito nuevamente, consideren no cambiar a los niños, manden a esta escuela Cherokee Lane, 
a los niños nuevos que se van a matricular el otro año. Pero al final ustedes tienen la palabra, pero deberían de concientizarse en realidad en ver si a los niños no les va a afectar el cambio. Porque mi hijo, por ejemplo, estudió en la Francia okay. Bush She has one en, de, en pandemia oh, más, virtual. Okay. Entonces, ahora ha estudiado dos años pre-K y kindergarten ahí That's en la en la Park. Perfect. Y mi hijo en las dos escuelas que ha ido ha aprendido. Y ahora él le ha puesto un amor. Cuando él supo que iba a cambiarse de escuela, él me dice, mami, yo no quiero ir a esa escuela. Yo amo mi escuela, amo mis maestros, mis compañeros. Me gusta ahí. Entonces, él ha aprendido bastante. Consideren esto en realidad. Muchísimas gracias, gracias a usted. Okay, I just wanted to reiterate as well um, about the changes. Uh, I would like to mention that this will not only affect me, but a big apartment complex that is within my community. They all live within five minutes in a walking distance from Langley Park McCormick. This will affect them greatly in case of an emergency. We all have the ability to easily walk to the school. Um, we are willing to all gather together and sign a petition if it is necessary, if you could just provide us with the information as to where we could send those petitions, we are all willing to sign it. I also wanted to add, if you are thinking about making these changes, maybe these can happen next year for the children enrolling next year, and you can keep the children that are enrolled currently at the school that they are in. My son had attended Francis Fuchs during the pandemic. He has been there in pre-K and kindergarten, and my other children are currently at Langley Park McCormick as well. And you know, when he found out that they were going to change his school, he was upset. He said, mom, I love the school. I don't want to leave. I love my teachers. I love my school. I love my classmates. So please have the children um in mind when you are making these changes. Thank you. Thank you. And I like to thank everyone who has come out tonight to testify. I will have to leave because I have my homeowners association meeting and the vice chair will take over from here. Next will be uh, this Rhonda Billingsley, individual opposed to closure of Point Ridge Elementary. Good night. Thank you. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Um, I have been a resident of Bowie for about 18 years and a member of Concerned Citizens of Prince George's County District 4 and the surrounding areas and the parent of a former Point of Ridge Elementary School student. I'm asking the board to reconsider closing Point of Ridge Elementary School. There are many successful stories of children graduating from Point of Ridge that have, been, have benefited from small class sizes and the individual attention from teachers in early childhood education. My son attended Point of Ridge from second to fifth grade. During his attendance, Dr. Stevenson was the principal of Point of Ridge. While attending Point of Ridge, my son had a teacher named Ms. Klein. Ms. Klein taught in education for over 30 years. She could have retired, but she loved the students and the community. During one of the PTA sessions, Ms. Ms. Klein informed, our, informed us our son may be advanced beyond his current grade and informed us we may want to have his IQ level tested. She recommended a program at Johns Hopkins called the Talented and Gifted Program. We had our son tested and the result was he was a fifth grader who tested at the eighth grade level. As parents, we always knew our son was advanced, but we never thought he would test several grades, grade levels above his current grade. Ms. Klein was one of many teachers at Point of Ridge who supported our family. Ms. Gatto, who's currently a teacher at Point of Ridge, was my son's reading teacher during his time as a student. She gave my son a book award for his hard work, which increased his, his confidence. The result of my son receiving the support in early childhood education at Point of Ridge allowed him to blossom into a young man has, who has been accepted to the United States Naval Academy. West Point, Coast, the Coast Guard Academy, the Marine Merchants Academy, Morehouse College, University of Maryland College Park, and George Mason University. He is currently a plebe in his first year at the United States Naval Academy with a focus in cybersecurity and Asian studies. As a parent, I am here to tell you that Point of Ridge has contributed tremendously to our son's early childhood education. The teachers are like family to the people in the community. Many kids like my son have benefited from the personal attention in a small classroom and having a sense of community in the classroom. If PG CPS decides to close Point of Ridge, students at Point of Ridge will have to adjust once again after missing almost a year and a half of their education. Kids will have to adjust to an already overcrowded Northview Elementary School, Perrywood Elementary School, and an increase in class sizes at Woodmore Elementary. The other questions I would also like to pose to PG CPS is where will the kids of South Lake and Amber Ridge attend school? 
What is the plan for early childhood education for families moving in this community? How will, how will this decision benefit our children moving, children by moving kids who are already suffering from the effects of the pandemic to unfamiliar surroundings? Early childhood education is the most, are the most important years in development. I know this firsthand as a parent. It took my son one year to adjust after he was enrolled in a new school. The county already has a shortage of school bus drivers. Parents will have to make adjustments to their work schedules. This decision is very personal to many people in this community. As a parent and taxpayer, I'm asking the board not to close Point of Ridge. This will not only hurt our kids, but it will also hurt our community. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Billingsley. Next, we will go back to number 25, Mr. Darius Hyman, an individual opposed to the change and its effect on families. Mr. Hyman. Hello, can you hear me? All right. Um, so my name is Darius Hyman. I am currently Point of Ridge Elementary School PTA president. That's uh, a fourth grader at Point of Ridge Elementary School. And um, again, kind of going back to the numbers that were given by Ms. Toll, Ms. Gatto, and uh, several of the other speakers, um, the numbers tell a tremendous story. Um, but ultimately, a little bit about us. We moved here with our fourth grader. We have um, five kids. And um, educational stability has been so critical um to us and i know that is so important for all the families in the community we bought our house here in Bowie, um for the actual uh for point of ridge elementary school i'm um, seeing that it was a neighborhood school um that was a big difference maker in us actually moving here um point of ridge has done an excellent job of fostering a sense of uh community for all of its students and all of its family members um it's like a big family and as a PTA president, um, you know, I think that I would be doing uh, fall festivals and holiday events right now. And um, we get uh, in this situation where we have to face um, possible closure. So um, with that being considered uh, where we're here and we're doing anything and everything that we can to help you reconsider uh, closing Point of Ridge Elementary School. I'm looking at the limited resources of teachers and buses. And when you stretch that out, you diminish the quality of the student's education. Uh, you have a school that has a tremendous walking population. Um, so now you have to create a new system or kind of add to the already stressed um, bus, bus system and the bus shortage is uh, very fragile right now. And then we're also asking what would happen to the building um, and the property value of those homes. And I've actually spoken with some of the builders, developers, and realtors in the area, and that number of uh, 2.1 child per home, um, or 40% um, of households would produce, could be taken into account. Any of those numbers will put us well over, um, over utilization, actually put us into overcrowding. Um, Point of Ridge is a four-star school, East Egate School as well, as it was uh, already stated. Um, it's just, I've, I've spoken to a lot of families, and I haven't spoken to one single family that is in favor of Point of Ridge being closed. Um, we've done petitions and surveys, and we have over 2,000 surveyed, signed, and petitioned against closing the school. So they are very supportive in keeping our school open. Um, looking at the funding and the support that we get from the city of Bowie and the education committee. Thank you, Mr. Hyman. You can finish up your last sentence. Um, just looking at all the support that we already have and not uh, losing that support by going out to another school. Thank you so much, Mr. Hyman. Next up, we have Ms. Karina Barrera, an individual opposed to change of the school from Bond Mill Elementary. Spanish interpretation is needed, therefore she will have six minutes. 
Hola, señora Barrera. Ahora es su oportunidad de poder hablar. Yo seré su intérprete. Por favor, hable en oraciones pequeñas para yo poder traducirla. Puede comenzar. Ok, buenas noches. Uh, yo estoy como madre de familia muy preocupada porque mi hijo atiende eh, la Bon Mill Elementary School. Una elementary que está de siete estrellas. Y pues en las evaluaciones que él ha tenido, él me han dicho de que está bajo un poquito por lo de la pandemia y todo tiene un bajo rendimiento en la escuela, pero yo tengo esperanza como madre de que mi hijo va a, a superar esas barreras porque la escuela es excelente escuela. Pues recientemente recibí una carta de que me, me quieren mover al niño por los límites escolares a otra escuela, un, otra elementary que está a evaluación 3. Y yo haciendo mis investigaciones, pues la escuela, eh, ellos lo que van a hacer es van a cerrar el sexto grado y ellos este, para recibir a, a nuestra comunidad, que es, es la de Arbory, de Laurel. Eh, yo estoy preocupada porque pues el número de estudiantes por clase no va a variar. Siempre eh, actualmente son aproximadamente 20 estudiantes y en la escuela donde a él va, este, le han recomendado ir sería de aproximadamente de 23 a 24. Más con estos niños de, de Arbory, de la comunidad de Arbory, entonces eso incrementaría más. Entonces esa es mi preocupación porque va a tener un bajo rendimiento tanto emocional como académico. Muchísimas gracias. ¿Eso es todo? Este, um, sí, eso es lo que más me preocupa. Ok, muchas gracias. Voy a traducir. Hello, everybody. My name is Karina Barrera. I am a worried mother. I am worried because my son goes to Bond Mill Elementary. This school is rated with seven stars and um, he has, my son has had a couple of evaluations done where they have told me that he is a little bit below grade level. And that is uh, partially uh, due to the pandemic and to COVID. But I have hopes that he will get through these obstacles and he will reach grade level soon. Um, that recently I received a letter that they want to change my son because of the boundaries um, to another school. And when I was doing my research on the school, I realized that they had three stars. And so they were closed on the sixth grade and they will receive Arbery students from the Laurel community um and they will have about 23 to 24 students already in the classroom so with the new students incoming from arbory from laurel they are going to have bigger uh classrooms and it's just going to increase the number of students per classroom and i think that that would be detrimental to my son's education and allowing him to catch up and that's also going to affect him emotionally and academically thank you is that all ¿Eso es todo, señora? Yes, thank you so much. Gracias. Next up, we have Miss Brittany Edmonds, individual concern for the change of schools for students. Is Miss Edmond on board? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Great, you can proceed. Yes, um, my children have been going to Tillam for a very, very long time, years, and it's, they're familiar with it. I went to it growing up. Um, I don't feel as though it's fair for them to go to another school, and I roll them on time. Um, transportation is an issue with when it comes to me, if I have to go get them. Um, also, I don't know, since, since we have the bus shortage, I feel as if it's going to be a long time for them to even get a bus. If they get a bus, then they would need a bus. And I also have a child that goes to Hydesville. And, uh, well, he's supposed to go to Hydesville, but he goes to Robert Goddard. And that's an issue. That's an inconvenience because he comes home super late. So uh, my children need to stay where they are. I feel as though they need to stay there because they're familiar with things teachers, classmates, you know, when it comes to change, adults are able to cope with it in a way, but when it comes to children and change, it, they may it take a while, and it, it could affect them in different ways. And they're going with the flow with everything ever since the pandemic hit. Um, it's just everything has been out, out of whack, but we started to get back to normal and everyone is 
um, used to the change when it comes to, hey, we can wear a mask, but when we went to when they started going to school, the mask issue wasn't a problem because they had to wear it. But that's different than having to wear a mask than to go to a different school. I feel as though my children, um, you know, since they love going to school, I would have a, a bad reaction when it comes to the children going to a different school. So I just got to the point where my daughter, um, you know, she, she loves going to school now, you know, because it was an issue. And I'm able to address these issues with the teachers. Now that, that I received a letter in the mail about a change, you know, that's going to push back on what I'm teaching my children. Oh, it's going to be okay and everything. And then they're going to come home. You know, it's a lot on me because it's just me and my children. So I please hope that you consider the children's feelings and when it comes to changes and how they would cope with things. And, and the parents who, are, who do not have transportation and then have to worry about the bus transportation and, and, if, and there's a shortage. So thank you for your time and I hope you enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you very much, Ms. Edmond. Next up is Mr. Bernard Payton, individual opposed to boundaries that affect Fort Foot, Indian Queen and Rivercrest communities. Mr. Payton. Mr. Payton, are you here? Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for joining. I'm Bernard. Thank you so much. I'm Bernard Payton, a resident of Fort Washington, Maryland. I reside in School Board District 8. I'm here to express my opposition to the two proposals which would force high school students who reside in the Indian Queen, Fort Foot, and Rivercrest communities to attend Potomac High School. The idea of essentially dismantling the local school to suit a few developers and greedy politicians is abhorrent. Three of my children graduated from Oxford Hill High School. I now have four grandchildren residing in the current attendance boundary for Oxford Hill High, but who will be forced from their community school to a faraway school in an unfamiliar and possibly dangerous environment. Oxford Hill has produced many successful graduates who earned full academic scholarships to colleges and universities throughout the country. In addition, others have gone on to distinguish themselves in various professional and non-professional careers throughout the state of Maryland and in the region. Speaking as one of the parents who fought hard to get the new Oxford Hill High School built, I cannot express how seriously disappointed I am that my grandchildren would be deprived of the opportunity to attend that very school. Moreover, stripping these communities of their community high school would greatly damage property values when prospective home buyers learn where high school students residing in this area will be required to enroll. We all know how reputation works, and school attendance boundaries ranks very high when decisions are made to purchase a home. This single action would deprive those of us who have labored to purchase and maintain our properties of the opportunity to keep values high and attractive to prospective buyers. I urge the board to reject these very dangerous and moronic proposals to discriminate against our communities in order to satisfy some with personal agendas that would do great harm. Please do the right thing by retaining the existing boundaries for Oxen Hill High School. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Payton. Next up is Ms. Rachel Podorsky Orzanko, individual concerned about boundary changes. Ms. Orzanko. Hi, Hi good evening. Uh, I am a parent of three children with a first grader at Bond Mill. When we moved to Laurel seven years ago, we chose our home because of the great reputation that Bond Mill has. Aside from the drastic change in rating from Bond Mill to Scotchtown, I'm also concerned with the purpose of the boundary change. This change would take away, take children of over 12 residential streets from Bond Mill to Scotchtown, making a crowded school even more crowded. I struggle to see the change of this purpose, the purpose of this change, pardon. Additionally, my son's life has been disrupted time and time again since March 2020 at the beginning of the pandemic. We are finally settled in a great school with a great routine. We love the administrators, we love the teachers, and a boundary change would just add further unnecessary disruption to his life. Thank you for your time. 
Thank you so much. Next up is Sharon Rones. Individual consideration for a sibling affected by boundary changes. Is she here? No, she's not in queue. Okay, thank you. We're going to go now to Mr. Danielle Angelo. Individual opposed to Bel Air Greens community assigned to Rockledge Elementary. Mr. Angelo. Hi there. Good evening, my name is Daniel Angelo and I live with my family on West Wind Drive in the Bel Air Greens neighborhood of Bowie. Under all three proposed scenarios, our tiny neighborhood will be sliced away from the Whitehall Elementary District and sent to Rockledge Elementary. Put plainly, Whitehall Elementary is a much better school and multiple families, including my own, specifically moved to this neighborhood to be a part of it. Whitehall is very close to us and rated quite highly, even ranking a nine on greatschools.com while Rockledge barely merits a three. The rationale for the, redistrict, for the redistricting is that lower performing schools will have burdens eased by shifting students, but Whitehall is already thriving and Rockledge is struggling. It does not make sense to add to Rockledge's burden. I'd like to request that West Wooden Drive not be redistricted. My children are still young and have not yet entered the school system, but if this change goes through for West Wooden Drive and the rest of our neighborhood, we will likely look into moving to another county altogether. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. Thank you. Next up is Hector Ferreira. Individual reevaluate school boundaries based on performance. Mr. Yes, Barrera. thank you. Thank you. Uh, my child started uh, to go to school during the pandemic online. Uh, he started to attend in-person learning uh, for the first time in the spring of 2022 and has advanced his learning since then. Uh, academically, some schools are at uh, different levels, which is something I would like uh, the board to consider. Uh, I, I'm speaking for the Albury uh, community uh, that goes to Bond Mill, which is a great uh, school. Albury is said to be uh, zoned to Scotchtown, uh, a school that uh, is underperforming at a score of 3.8. Uh, Bond Mill is uh, a school that is performing above average at seven. My child currently attends a class of, of just 20, a small class size and benefits him uh, academically. He loves his school and enjoys uh, going there. Bond Mill is a uh, school of 485 students. Uh, they will be taking 68 children uh, from Scotchtown, I'm, I'm sorry, to Scotchtown that houses over 500 students. Uh, they're going to be transferring uh, the sixth graders to the middle school, uh, local middle school there. Scotchtown uh, Mill will still remain overcrowded while decreasing uh, Bond Mill's uh, population. I'm concerned that my child will lose in, uh, our, uh, in an important uh, learning or be a affected. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Next, we had Katherine Escobar individual opposed to proposed boundary changes. Spanish interpretation is needed, therefore six minutes will be granted. Madam Vice Chair, she's not in queue. Ms. Cox is here. Ms. Cox is here, okay. Ms. Yeah. Vanilla Cox, individual against consolidation of Pointer Ridge Elementary. Hi, good evening. Uh, my name is Vania Cox. I am a parent, have been a parent of Pointer Ridge for about 10 years. So while I have numerous issues with the proposed consolidation of Pointer Ridge, i.e. the overcrowding that will surely occur, no matter how you skew the enrollment um, or the student to teacher ratios in favor of the proposal, because after you do the math, um, if you do the numbers, math is math. The newly formed mental uh, health and social anxiety issues that will surely come with the ruptured educational stability um, of the shuffled and displaced students, the board's blind eye to the community involvement and the commitment to the Pointer Ridge, um, to the success of the Pointer Ridge that we have a community has raised uh, over $17,000 in the past two weeks. Uh, in a two week time frame, just in the support of the school and the beautification of it. Um, also the, the new communities of Amber Ridge, the South Lake that upon completion 
will bring an estimated 400 plus students to the Pointer Ridge uh, School, boosting the enrollment numbers, which already are steadily increasing. Um, but what I feel the board should take into consideration is the decision for the proposal itself was reached without accurate representation um, from the actual community members and the parents of Pointer Ridge. So to say the surveys were made public and to say the public was made aware of the surveys are two totally different statements. Yes, they were public, but to but the responses from the surveys themselves were low. Um, when we were asked the, for the specific numbers um, for the contribution from the Pointer Ridge community, we were told that only 37 respondents from Pointer Ridge Elementary itself participated in the survey. So I just have to ask how fair is it to make a decision that will directly affect us when only 37, 37 people from the school participated in, in, in that survey itself. Um, another um, overlook from the proposal itself would be, as someone stated before, the building that will be left behind. Um, once the children are shuffled around and displaced, forcibly removed from the community that they know and love, because that is what will happen what will be left behind the building, the shell of the building, they'll have nothing left, just the empty shell of the building. So I just ask that you all take that into consideration and thank you for your time. Thank you so much. Next up is Weta Stoker, individual boundary changes at Pink Branch Elementary. Good, e good evening. I am speaking in behalf of a grandparent of a student at Paint Branch Elementary. I am a retired Maryland public school teacher with over 40 years of experience, including working with GED students through a local community college that were incarcerated. And it is very, very important that Students are in a school that is supported by their community. Paint Branch is being moved under scenario two that they would be a feeder school to Buck Lodge. For children in North College Park, this is moving them out of their community into an area that they are not familiar with they are on the east side of the University of Maryland. So that is a natural barrier that the College Park students are more in tune with the College Park Green Belt, moving them to New Hampshire Avenue above Adelphi. This is just going to be, we go to school Monday through Friday. Parents that are not involved in the school result in children that are not involved in the school. The middle school years are critical. And as many of my incarcerated pupils told me, I started dropping out in seventh grade. And as someone who has taught elementary, middle school, and high school, I have seen students coming into high school and they are so totally unprepared that they don't understand the high school community and they don't get involved. And I feel it is critical to keep community-based schools because parents participate, students participate, students are successful. I have heard this over and over about the parents this evening supporting Pointer Ridge and how you could raise $17,000 in two weeks and you all should be congratulated. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Next up is William Bocariz. Mr. Bocariz, individual concerned of the impact of moving students from better performing schools to underperforming schools. Good evening, all. Uh, my name is William Bojorquez. 
Uh, don't worry about the pronunciation of my last name. Um, I'm a parent of uh, my daughter goes to uh, Bone Mill Elementary School. Um, I will start maybe reading some of the words coming in the last letter you sent it to us and start saying, uh, by adjusting the boundaries, we will address severe overcrowding in the northern part of the county and under enrollment in South County. And uh, you said every child deserves to learn, work, and play in the best environment possible. So I don't know why I'm understand maybe you sent it to us the opposite words or ideas because bone meal is ranked, uh, I mean, the north it's seven uh, to 10. And you want to move to Scottstown Hills, rank is three out uh, 10. And the top of elementary schools, Bond Mill is the top number one. And Scottstown is number 13. Bond Mill have uh, 488 students and Scottstown have 619 students. So I believe you are trying to send us to us the opposite words or ideas you want to do by adjusting the boundaries. So my concern are really worries about why you trying to do at Maryland, our county public school are ranked 22nd of 25. So I believe the focus to uh, looking for any solutions, it's not move uh, the kids from Arbory to Scottstown. If we are looking for uh, the best environment, environment possible to the kids. So that's all. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for joining us. And I'd like to thank everyone who has participated in today's event and provided us with uh, live speaking comments. That was our last uh, speaker that's present and accounted for. We have received written comments from 42 members of the public and we received two pre-recorded videos from members of the public. I would like to again thank everyone for attending tonight and for joining us and providing their comments either live in writing or with video. Uh, if there is no one else present, Dr. Golson, I'd like to call this evening complete. Do you have any comments or anything? No, thank you. Okay, thank you so much everyone for joining us and enjoy the rest of the evening. <laughs>